welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing well today. For today's video, as you guys can tell by the title, we have a very special Halloween related video. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to achieve a very quick and easy 10 last minute Halloween makeup looks. I feel like the spooky season is perfect to get your makeup brushes out, get your palettes out, and just get really creative with makeup, even if you're staying at home for Halloween. For the last couple of years in my Halloween series, I usually do one sort of tutorial per look, but today I thought I would switch it up a little bit and kind of compile 10 different Halloween looks together that I think are really simple and easy to achieve. There will also be one or two looks in this video that does incorporate a face mask, so that's amazing. Obviously, nowadays you want to be wearing a face mask, especially if you're going trick or treating. But, anyways, if you guys are brand new here and you guys haven't seen my face before, hi, I'm Roxy. Welcome to my channel. If you guys want to stick around, make sure you guys subscribe down below. But if you guys want to see 10 easy last minute Halloween makeup look ideas, then let's get on into the video. All right, guys, so the very first look is actually inspired by Catherine Pierce from Vampire Diaries. If you guys haven't seen that show, you absolutely must. I think it's just such an amazing and easy look to do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna contour my face with my Roxy X Revolution Contour and Highlighter Palette. This is just to add a little bit of depth into my cheekbones and make my face look a little bit more slender and more sunken in like a vampire. I'm then taking my Roxy X Revolution Ride or Die Palette and using the two brown shades from this palette, I'm creating a soft smoky look on the top. And then I'm also pulling that brown shadow down to the bottom underneath my eyes to make them look really tired and kind of create that vampire sort of vibe. Next I'm taking a touch of the red shade from the palette called Ariel and I'm just adding that kind of over the top of that brown and I'm just focusing that red shade more towards the actual lash line and then I'm also adding that to my crease as well just to kind of tie the whole redness together. Now using a more precise and thinner brush I'm taking a mix of the red shade and also the dark brown shade from the palette and I'm just starting to draw the veins underneath my eyes. If you guys have seen the Vampire Diaries, you'll know what this is about. Basically, when they kind of give in to their vampire instincts, their veins kind of pop out underneath their eyes. Now, to make the veins look a little bit more realistic, I'm just going over the whole entire underneath of my eye with just some powder and kind of just diffusing that redness. And then I'm just lining my lips with a lip liner. The one I'm using is by Rimmel. It's the shade Cappuccino. This is like my go-to lip liner. And then I'm taking a red lipstick from Too Faced. I'm kind of using a lighter shade in the center and then using a darker shade towards the outer corners to create almost like an ombre effect. And then I'm going in with some red face paint and just adding that to the corners of my lips to make fake blood drips. You could use fake blood for this, but personally I find it a little bit like messy, so I decided to do it with face paint instead. All right guys, so this is the finished Catherine Pierce inspired makeup look. I love this so much and I think it was so easy to recreate. This is probably one of the easiest makeup looks I've ever done on my channel. And now that it's finished, I kind of don't want to take it off, so I'm going to take this opportunity to let you guys know about today's video sponsor. Now this portion of the video is actually sponsored by Cooking Diary. If you guys don't know what it is, it's basically a free app game that you can download on iOS, Android, Windows, and also Amazon. I've been playing this quite a bit since the evenings are so long nowadays. It kind of helps me kill the time. In Cooking Diary, you are in charge of running your own restaurant chain, which I think is so fun. You get to control a chef slash waiter who basically has to fulfill customers' orders very quickly without burning it. I'm awful at cooking in real life. I'm just gonna put it out there. So this really fulfills my cooking fantasies. There's some really cool characters in the game. You can basically customize your character, add clothing, accessories, all that kind of jazz. So I feel like there's a bit of everything in this game. And also, as you level up, you get to customize and decorate your own restaurant. Now, this part is very on theme with today's video. Cooking Diary are actually having a Halloween in-game event. There will be lots of exciting Halloween-related content within the game, as well as a giveaway. They've actually asked me to let you guys know that they will be giving away $10,000 worth of Amazon credits. So to participate in the giveaway, all you have to do is download the game if you haven't got it already. Once you're in the game, you want to style your character using the 80s clothing. You can then screenshot your character and then upload the photo of it onto the contest post over on the Cooking Diary Facebook. In total, there's going to be a hundred different winners, so make sure you guys head over and do all the rules. All of the information on the giveaway will be down below as well. Make sure you guys head over and download the game. It's free. I've been playing it so much. I'm literally addicted. I'm on like level 40 right now. But anyways, let's get back into the video and get on to the next look. Alright, so this next look is actually a Cheshire Cat inspired makeup look. I absolutely love this. I think it's very cute yet creepy kind of at the same time. So at first all you'll need is a black eyeliner. So what I'm doing is I'm just tracing out where I want my sort of Cheshire Cat mouth to be. I'm just drawing a little line down the center just underneath my nose and I'm connecting that to the sort of shape that I want the opening of my mouth to be. Once I've done that I'm then going to focus on my nose. I'm just creating this little sort of button shape around my nose and then also incorporating the rest of my nose. You 
can be super creative with this shape. You can make it as little or as big as you like. It really depends on your nose shape as well. And then the next step is to, of course, draw the teeth. So the first thing to do is you want to outline the teeth. So I'm just drawing out these upside down triangles. It's kind of tricky when you're drawing it over your mouth because, of course, that's a very two dimensional space. So what you want to do really is just keep looking into the mirror and make sure that the lines are as straight as possible when you look straight ahead. Once you have done that, you then want to take some white face paint. The face paints I use and swear by are actually by a brand called Snazaroo. Now, if you're in the UK, you can get these off of Hobbycraft or I'm sure you can even get them on eBay or Amazon. These are water-based, so you just mix a little bit of water into it and they're very, very pigmented and really easy to take off as well. So I'm just using a flat brush to apply the white face paint into the teeth inside the little triangles we've just created. This is kind of tedious, but you want to try and stay within the lines. But if you do mess up a little bit and go out of the lines, it doesn't really matter because we are going to be fixing this up with some black face paint afterwards. So now I'm just taking the black face paint and I'm just filling in the sort of blank parts of the mouth. You just want to take your time with this. Whilst you're doing this, you kind of want to have a steady hand to get the most crisp results. So if your hands are quite shaky, I would recommend to maybe just pop yourself up on a table and use the table as like a stabilizer for your arm. And just doing that will definitely improve your line work and just make everything so much sharper and more crisp. Now the next step is to focus on the shadow. So I'm using my Roxx Revolution Color Burst Palette. This is literally perfect because it has every single color under the moon. So I'm just taking the shade Lavender and I'm just using this as like a slight nose contour kind of thing. Obviously Cheshire Cat is pink and purple so we kind of want to emulate those colors through this look. I'm also pulling that into the inner socket of my eye and then also kind of diffusing that through the crease. I'm then taking the darker purple shade from the palette called Memories and I'm just using that to kind of define my lid. And then I'm going to take the shade Twilight and just kind of pop that in the outer corner to add a little bit of definition and make a slightly darker purple. And then I'm going back in to the black face paint and kind of just carving that nose around the edges and tidying it up. Now lastly for the eyes, as this is a cat look, of course I have to do a cat wing liner because who would I be if I didn't? I'm just using the NYX Epic Ink Liner for this. It's really easy to control and I'm just basically creating a cat wing. I'm then also going in with some white eyeliner and I'm just applying that into the inner corner on my lower lash line. I feel like this kind of just pulls the whole look together. And then lastly, I'm applying some mascara to my top and bottom lashes and that is the finished look. Now the next look is this really cool, almost like superhero with lightning powers kind of character. I absolutely love this. This look is inspired by James Charles. I like to call her Electra. That's the kind of superhero name that I think I would have if I was a superhero. So for this look, you definitely need some blue face paint to create the base and the canvas of the look. I feel like doing this with eyeshadow will take forever. So I'm using that same brand of face paint, but this time in a blue shade. And I'm basically just going over my eyes with this, even my eyebrows and creating almost like a mask shape on top of my face. Once you've applied that, because this is water-based, you want to set that into place. So I'm just using a clear sort of powder just to set it down and make sure we can work on top. I'm then taking the blue shade Blue Lagoon from the Roxy X Revolution Color Burst Palette, and I'm just using that to kind of start carving out and defining the shape of my face. So I'm kind of just applying that into my nose contours, also my inner sort of eye area. And then I'm actually taking another shade from the Nikki Tutorials X Beauty Bay Palette, and I'm using that to kind of deep up the whole look. Once I've gotten to this stage where I've kind of created like darkness and light in the blue sort of mask, I'm then gonna take a white face paint with a small tiny thin brush and I'm just gonna start creating the lightning strokes. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I kind of just freehanded this, but if you would like, you can use a reference picture of lightning to kind of help you out a little bit. Now the last part of the look is the lip. I wanted to go for something a little bit more natural because obviously the eye area is so busy. So I went for the shade New York from the Roxy X Revolution Lip Kit Trio. I love this shade so much and I feel like it works perfectly for this look. Now to complete the look, I just applied some lashes and this is the finished look. I think this looks so cool. I absolutely love it. I genuinely felt like this was my alter ego. I think this kind of look would be amazing if you also had a blue wig and maybe like a whole blue outfit. Then you would definitely look like a superhero.
Now the next look is inspired by the neon kind of skulls that I've been seeing a lot on the internet recently. It's also kind of like a sugar skull, which I have seen you guys request me to do a lot on my channel. So here it is. The first thing for this look you will need is a white eyeliner. I feel like this is key for this look because it just makes everything so much easier in terms of placement. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of freestyling a skull design on my face. You can take some inspiration off of the internet if you like. Once I'm happy with the general design, I'm then going back to my color burst palette. Now again, I'm just a little bit biased here, but this palette is perfect for this look because again, it has all of the different colors of the rainbow. So the first shade I'm gonna take is the yellow shade and I'm just kind of going over just certain parts of the skull. I kind of want it to have that rainbow effect. So I'm gonna use each shade as I go along and I'm just gonna kind of fill in and go over the white lines in whatever place I kind of feel like it. There's not really any rule to it. You guys could put your own spin on this or you could literally copy the colorings exactly as I've done it. It's really up to you. As you guys can see, when you kind of go over the white line with a shadow, it kind of creates that sort of neon effect already without even having to do much. Just because the shadow is already clinging onto the white eyeliner and then what's kind of left behind is this sort of glow, which already makes it look like a neon light. Once I've finished with all the different shades, I'm then going back in with a very precise thin brush and I'm just applying some white face paint over that white eyeliner that we initially placed down. This is just to kind of get that light back into it and get that definition because it was diffused quite a lot with the colors on top. Now you could leave it as it is right now if you want, but I do kind of want to go in with some darkness to the look to kind of make it more defined and really make it look like a skull. So I'm just going to take some black face paint and I'm just going to go into the hollows of the sort of mouth area. And I'm also using that face paint around the teeth and then kind of diffusing the front middle teeth with just a black eyeshadow. The black eyeshadow I'm also going to take and just kind of create a rough smoky eye. This doesn't have to be perfect, but again, you could do whatever look you want. I just thought that using black shadow for this look would kind of create that skull hollow eye effect without actually having to draw, you know, hollow eyes. Again, you can just finish this off with some mascara. You could even pop some lashes on if you like, but this is the finished look. I feel like it's a very nice modern twist on a regular kind of skull makeup that we've seen for many years now. And even though it's kind of on the sweet side, I feel like it's still a very cool Halloween makeup. Okay, this next look is really cool and again, perfect for last minute, especially if you're a beginner to makeup and you haven't really got all the different colors of makeup and you kind of just only have like a black eyeshadow and some black eyeliner. So to start off with, I'm just taking the Shane Dawson X Jeffree Star palette because this just happens to have the blackest shade that I own. With this, I'm basically just giving myself a black eye all around. I'm then taking my black face paint again. You could use a black eyeliner for this and I'm starting to create the spider legs. Now, if if any of you guys are extremely scared of spiders up to the point that you can't even look at pictures of it, this might be a little bit tricky, but I basically went on the internet and I just Googled a spider and I just looked at its legs and the way it sort of positions itself in a 3D sort of environment. And I kind of just tried to replicate that on my face. So I created the legs first. And then once I was done with that, I took a brown eyeshadow and on an angled brush, I kind of started to create the shadow of what the leg would cast on my face. So if you think of the light being straight on in front of me, this is the kind of shadow that the legs would create. Now, this can be a little bit tricky to get your head around, so don't panic if it doesn't look perfect straight away. As you can see here, it didn't look amazing to start off with, but once I kind of started to diffuse it and made the lines thicker, it actually ended up looking more realistic. Once I got the desired sort of shadow underneath, I then started to focus on the actual spider legs. So for this, I basically just went back to my white face paint and I started to create some certain little spots of highlight on top of the spider legs. So I'm just basically doing that for each leg, just creating little highlights here and there. And as you guys can see, this really kind of made it look so much more three-dimensional. Now to finish off the look, I just popped on some black lipstick and this is it. I love this so much. I think it's a really cool and easy illusion makeup to do at home. So I really do hope you guys recreate it because it was so much fun. All right, the next look is kind of for the makeup lovers out there. This is like the blank canvas kind of look. I don't think it's necessarily creepy or anything, but I just think it's very creative. Again, it's kind of inspired by that whole James Charles thing. So the first step I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a blusher or an eyeshadow, you can use whatever, but I'm just using the Blush Burst palette and I'm using that on a very big dome brush and kind of just applying that right over my eye and really blowing it out. I'm then taking the orange shade called Pumpkin, very appropriate for this video, and I'm kind of just working 
packing that into the lid underneath my lid and kind of just trying to diffuse it into the other shade we've just applied. Essentially what I'm doing is just creating sort of like a round sphere gradient where it's lighter towards the edges and then it gets darker towards the center. The next step is again to reach for the white face paint. I'm working it out again. So I'm just kind of creating this freehand sort of shape. It's almost as if, I don't know, someone took a brush and just painted that portion of my face and then the rest of it was just left a blank canvas. So once I covered the remainder of my face that was not touched by any makeup, this is the finished outcome. I think this is really cool. I feel like I could have perfected it a little bit more and made the white portions a bit neater, but I really like the overall look of it and how it turned out. All right, the next look I'm really excited about because it actually incorporates a face mask, which I think is very appropriate for these times that we're living in. This is the Pennywise mask. And you know what? Let's start taking face masks to our advantage. At Halloween, I don't think we should see it as like a nuisance. We can actually make something really cool out of it. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna apply some white face paint to the top half of your face. You don't really need to do it to the bottom because let's just say it's gonna be covered anyway. Next, I'm taking my color Burst palette once again and I'm using the red shade called red velvet and I'm just kind of creating a smoky tapered look. I'm then taking the dark brown shadow from the palette and I'm also applying that into kind of like the outer crease really blending it in to make it a little bit more smoky and then also applying that shade underneath my lower lash line. Once I've done that I'm now going to create a cut crease with this white cut crease canvas from Revolution. I'm just applying that to the inner portion of my eye and then just blending this out with a little flat brush and perfecting that cut crease. I'm then just taking a black ink liner and creating a wing with this. The next step is to take your trusty face mask. I actually got this in a set from Amazon and they are kind of made of like a cotton kind of fabric, which I thought was perfect to actually draw on top of. So we're actually just gonna be using regular face paints to draw onto the face mask. Isn't that genius? I think so. So what I'm doing is I'm just creating the sort of Pennywise design. Again, I just looked at reference images off of Google to kind of create this Look. I'm then taking my black face paint and creating the teeth. I kind of made them really sharp and spiky just to make them look scary or whatever. <laughs> Once those are done and the sort of like negative space is filled out to make it look hollow, I'm then taking a yellow kind of shade on a fluffy brush and I'm just kind of applying that over the teeth to make them look a little bit more discolored and gross and kind of like Pennywise's teeth. I'm then taking that brown eyeshadow we used earlier for the eyes and I'm just using that on a little small brush to kind of create shadows around the teeth and again make them look a little bit more three-dimensional and this is it. I really took advantage of the mask with this look because usually it's quite hard to create these different shapes on our face because obviously we have the lips, we have the nose. So I really love how this look turned out and I feel like it's very practical for this year's Halloween if you do decide to go trick-or-treating. The next look is yet another face mask look. I created this skull kind of effect. Again, taking advantage of that face mask. All right, so to create this look, you wanna either put your face mask on now or you could do it after, but the first step you wanna do is just cover the top half of your face with some white face paint. I actually ended up using a beauty blender this time because I realized it gives you a way smoother paint finish. Once I've done that, I'm then going straight back into the black face paint and using a thin brush, I'm just starting to draw around my eyes to create the design sort of like hollow skull eye shape. I'm then starting to work on the actual face mask. I'm not gonna lie, this was a little bit time consuming because the face paint just doesn't work the same way on fabric as it does on skin. It was a little bit tricky to get the paint to be like one smooth opaque color. You kind of had to go over it a few times because the paint just seeps into the fabric. But once I got there, I felt like it was all good. I'm now just basically creating the hollow parts of, you know, the jaw and where the teeth are gonna sit. The teeth were probably the most tricky part so I actually went ahead and used a black ink liner just for a little bit more precision and ease to actually draw them on as they are so tiny. And once I drew them out I just went straight back into the black face paint and started to kind of carve around them with the black. This was probably the most time consuming part of the whole look because it was just a little bit tedious and like I said the face paint just doesn't work the same way as it does on skin. I think the key with this look is just realizing that you can use eyeshadow on these cotton face 
masks. So I actually went in and kind of mixed a black and a white eyeshadow to kind of make a gray. And then I started using that to actually, you know, create shadows within the skull and make it look less 2D. Now, if your mask is a little bit too big for you, like it was for me, don't be afraid to just cut it. As long as it's still covering your face properly, it's totally fine to cut it down. So I just kind of took some little scissors and snipped it away. I absolutely love this look. I think it looks so creepy with the face mask. Again, this would not ruin your Halloween costume. It so perfectly goes with any kind of skeleton outfit. And it was actually pretty easy and cheap to do. So I would highly recommend doing this. Alright, now the next look is kind of like a cutesy ghost themed sort of makeup look. If you're not really the type of person to dress up in like a full blown costume, I think this is a really cute idea. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm just adding some blush to my face. Again, I'm using the Blush Burst palette if you're wondering. All of the makeup products that I use in this video will be linked in the description. I'm then just applying some P. Louise base onto my eyes. I've only recently bought it and now I understand the hype. Like everyone is hyping about the P. Louise and it's for a good reason. The next step. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the orange shadow from the color burst palette and I'm just applying that sort of in the outer corner of my eye but really kind of all over. I'm then going in with the yellow shade and just applying that in the inner portion of the eye. With these two shades we really are channeling either like pumpkin vibes or like candy corn vibes and I'm loving it. I'm then blending that yellow down underneath my eyes as well just to make it a little bit more abstract and then also adding some purple on the lower lash line and also the tip of my nose. Next up I'm again reaching for the white face paint and using a little flat brush I'm just drawing the base of my little ghosts and I'm actually joining them onto the corners of my mouth I'm just being really messy with it at first and just kind of freehanding it and then doing the same thing to the other side Once I've laid down that white base, I'm then taking my black eyeliner and just kind of drawing a little edge around it just to make the ghosts a little bit more defined on my face. You then, of course, cannot forget to actually draw the little ghost shocked faces. So I'm just drawing two little dots and like a little O for the mouth. And then I'm using the purple shade to kind of go around the edge of the ghost. It also ties in with the sort of lower lash line color. This just makes the ghost pop a little bit more from my face too. Now for the lips, I couldn't decide which lip shade to go for orange or purple and I decided to go for both. So on the bottom lip I'm using an orange shade and then on the top lip I'm using purple. I feel like the lip combo really works as well because it ties those oranges and those purples from the rest of the look. And now the last Halloween look is this half pumpkin, half just regular face kind of look. I feel like the half and half kind of vibe is a very common Halloween trend throughout many years now. And of course pumpkins are like the staple of Halloween so I couldn't do this video without doing at least one pumpkin inspired look. So for this one I'm using the same eye makeup from the previous look just to save time and basically I'm just going straight in with the orange face paint. I'm then creating this rough sort of line across half of my face where the pumpkin is gonna start and where my face kind of ends. The paints in this palette are a little bit on the shiny side so I did have to set this down to kind of mattify it with just some white face powder. And once you've set that into place you want to start outlining the pumpkin sort of face so I kind of started on my nose with some black face paint. Now this part is exactly the same as pumpkin carving. You can get however creative as you like. You can create whatever shape of you know the eye, the nose, the sort of teeth shape. It is really up to you but you can of course just copy what I did. Next I'm taking some brown eyeshadow from the Color Buzz palette and I'm creating sort of like the pumpkin ridges. I don't really know what they're called. You know like the the crevices in the pumpkin. You can literally see it in the pumpkin behind me. That's what I'm trying to recreate. I then went over the pumpkin ridges with a brown eyeshadow on a fluffy brush just to kind of add a bit more definition. And this is the finished look. Again I'm obsessed and it was so easy to recreate. Again you probably would only really need to buy some orange face paint to recreate this look. Everything else you could definitely do with just a regular makeup that you probably already own. So that is everything for today's video. Those were the 10 different easy Halloween looks. I hope you guys enjoyed them and I hope that you guys can recreate some of them. If you do, make sure you guys tag me on my Instagram at Roxoras. You guys know the drill in the comments below. Let me know which one of these looks was your favorite and if you do recreate them, I would love to see it. I thought I would just finish off this video as Catherine Pierce because this is actually one of my favorite looks of the video, believe it or not. I am the biggest Vampire Diaries lover and fan. So this look is definitely a little bit 
bit of me. And I actually feel like Vampire Diaries is really on trend this year, especially on TikTok. I don't know what that's about, but I'm not mad at it. The only thing I'm sad about is the fact that they're taking it off of Netflix. Like, why would you do that? As if 2020 wasn't bad already. But anyways, that is all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye! Mwah!